I've said this before, but casinos do not like winners. That being the case, having to handle and navigate heat and back offs in a casino is one of the toughest jobs we have as card counters. In this video, I'm gonna talk about what heat is, how to handle it, and what to do when you experience those inevitable back offs in a casino. To start out, let's just define what heat is. Heat is when a casino is giving you extra attention because they're trying to decide if you're an advantage player that they're going to countermeasure or back off. Now, of course, we don't want heat, but the reality is playing a winning game means that at some point casinos might decide they don't want our action. And to be honest, one of the toughest parts about dealing with heat in a casino is trying to decide if it's real or not. I think the classic example is when you're playing at a table and the phone in the pit rings and the pit boss picks it up and your palms start sweating and a few minutes later, someone comes and taps on your shoulder and you're like, all right, here it goes, I'm getting backed off. You turn and it's a host offering you a free room or seeing if they can provide any comps for you. There have been plenty of times in my career where I was absolutely certain I was gonna get backed off only to have nothing happen. Then again, there's been roughly 100 times where I have been backed off from casinos. So let's talk about what to do when you're experiencing heat in a casino. The first thing you need to do when you think you're having heat in a casino is decide, do I even care or not? There are times where it's maybe your local casino or a place that you've been playing for a long time and you don't wanna lose this casino. If you're getting some heat, maybe you just call it a session, leave and give that casino some time to cool down or come back on a different shift. There's nothing wrong with that. But there are other times where you think about it and you have nothing to lose if you get backed off. In those situations, my advice, play through the heat and see what happens. The most dramatic example of this that I ever experienced was me and an early team that I was on, we traveled to this casino across the country. This was like a six hour flight somewhere. You know, We were paying for rental car flights, all this stuff. We're playing at this casino. We're having a great session playing there doing spotters and I was the big player. We were on our second day of this and all of a sudden we start getting heat. The pit boss is coming over and thumbing through the cards in the discard tray like this. And it's like, oh no, he's counting it down. We panicked. We left only to sit in our hotel rooms for the rest of the night and think, well, maybe we'll come back another time. But were we actually ever gonna come back to this casino a six hour flight away some other time to see if they were gonna let us last another trip? We essentially did what I call backing yourself off. We backed ourselves off from this casino rather than making them back us off. In doing that, we wasted an opportunity to generate EV. And then we found out years later, this casino would let you count cards there till you'd won $100,000. So we could have kept playing through the heat, continued to generate EV and seen if they were actually gonna do anything about it. We ended up doing the same thing to ourselves another time in another casino until we finally realized this is so dumb. We're driving away from or flying away from casinos that we're never gonna come back to just hoping we get another session in. So why don't we just play and see what they do? If the casino doesn't back you off, that's great. You played through the heat and generated more EV. If the casino does back you off, at least you can check it off your list rather than wondering for the rest of eternity, should I go back there? Should I have kept playing? At least you know how it ended. You might be saying, but if I do get backed off, then they might know who I am and put me in a database. Well, the reality is they might already know who you are. And if they're gonna put you in a database, it's not gonna be because of the back off or not. It's just gonna be because they determine sometimes the next day that you are an advantage player. Other times, if they back you off, you don't have to give them ID if you don't want them to know who you are. And then maybe they, you know, want to put you in a database as an unknown, but that's really not that daunting of a thing. Even if you are put in a database, it's going to happen to all of us advantage players at some point. If you're afraid of back offs and you find yourself kind of panicking, even thinking about this idea, I strongly recommend reading Josh Axelrad's book, Repeat Until Rich. The first half of the book is incredibly interesting. It's about his experience playing on a high limit team. I know Josh, he's a brilliant advantage player and he's had a lot of success as a card counter and advantage player and their team was fearless and they said, we're not gonna back ourselves off. We're gonna make the casinos do it. And that's how they had so much success. And honestly, every professional I know has to learn how to have that fearlessness in a casino. The last thing I'll say about navigating heat in a casino is that you're gonna have to learn how to determine if it's real or not. If you're trying to avoid a back off, you're gonna have to develop this sixth sense of, are they really talking about me in a, hey, we think he's an advantage player or not, or, 
Are they just talking about you and saying, hey, this guy's bought in for this amount of money, he's been playing at this table, because they do have to keep track of chips at the casino, stuff like that. There's no secret answer, but what I wanna do now is get into some kind of pre-back off ceremonies that'll help you learn how to navigate, is this heat real or not? The first pre-back off ceremony is people in the pit congregating and talking about you. So again, this one, it's really difficult. Are they just talking about you because you're betting lots of money? Or are they talking about you in a, hey, we think this guy might be up to something. You have to follow your gut with this, but you know, they might be kind of trying to not look at you, but they can't help but look at you if if they are talking about you in a more nefarious, if they're just talking about, oh yeah, that guy over there, then they'll look over, they have nothing to hide, they don't feel like they're you know doing anything subversive. You just gotta kind of gauge what's going on with these people talking about me in the pit. The second kind of pre-back off ceremony is when the phone's ringing, the person picks up the phone, and then they look at you and look away. <laughs> when this is happening, the phone call is probably coming from surveillance. And if that's the case, they're saying, hey, we're analyzing this player, or, you know, it, it could be that there was a dealer mispay and they're just calling to say, hey, there was a mispay and you need to talk to the dealer about it. At that point, you need to decide what you wanna do. If the, if the pit boss walks over and says to the dealer, hey, you've gotta clean up your rack, then you know it's not about you. If he walks over and starts standing over the table, or if he walks over and whispers to the dealer, cut the shoe in half, you know he's talking about you. Or if he then starts talking to other pit bosses and pointing at you, it might be time to get out of there. The third pre-back off ceremony is what's called hawking. So imagine the phone rings and then he gets off the phone, the pit boss walks over and he stands over the table like this, kind of staring at you and watching the game. This is usually a way of him saying, hey, I see you, I see what you're doing and seeing if that's gonna be good enough to get you to leave. If a pit boss comes over and you know, I, I can tell my temperature's rising, my palms are sweating and I'm wondering, am I about to get backed off? What I like to do is just ask something friendly to the pit boss. Say something like, hey, what's your favorite place to eat around here? And then see how he responds. If all of a sudden he goes from a frown to a smile, he's like, oh yeah, I love the ramen place off of Third Street, then you know, like the phone call had nothing to do with heat. Maybe it had to do with, hey, there's a guy betting larger and just make sure that the dealer is doing things right. Maybe the dealer isn't following the proper procedure with the cards. If instead he stays grumpy and he says, you know, something like, oh, you know what you're doing. Maybe it's time for you to get a, go get a meal. Okay, you've got real heat and you gotta decide, do you wanna play through it or get out of there? The fourth form of a pre-back off ceremony is the preferential shuffle or the flat bet. This is where, you know, you raise your bet and the pit boss says, hey, shuffle. Or the pit boss says, hey, whatever you bet, you gotta stay at that bet. If you've seen my back off video, which you haven't, it's kind of hilarious. Uh, we'll put the link below, but in that, the guy keeps saying, hey, whatever you wanna bet, that's what you're gonna have to bet the whole shoe. What they're trying to do is without having to actually back you off, they're trying to, you know, handle the fact that you're a winning player and take away your advantage. If this happens, you gotta decide how to deal with it, but you're probably not gonna talk them out of it. And it's actually time to get out of there. You can come back on another shift or another day, another month, another year, but it's probably better than an actual back off at that casino. The final form of pre-back off ceremonies is when you get half shooed. So after the cut card comes out, the pit boss says something to the dealer and says, hey, cut it in half. And you know, in a six deck shoe, they're only dealing three decks before they shuffle again. This has happened to me plenty of times. And what you can do in this situation is you can actually play through a shoe or two and see what happens. Myself, other APs, we've had it where if you play through a shoe or two, the casino might back off and say, oh, I guess they're not really a card counter or else they would have left. I remember Dusty, AKA Pink Chip, was playing in a casino and he called me up and he said, hey, I'm getting heat, they're half shoeing me, is it okay if I just flat bet for a little bit and see if the heat goes away? And I said, yeah, if you pay the cost of the EV of what you're doing, then that's fine. He did that, he played through a couple shoes, Everything went back to normal and they continued to play multiple more hours after that. I remember one casino, they were trying to half shoe me, but the dealers didn't really like it. So they were, you know, cutting off, not really half a shoe. And I ran to my car, figured out that I could still beat this game because the rules were so good, even with them cutting off two and a half decks. And then what I would do is every time the dealer would be shuffling, I'd get them talking. I start asking them questions. And when they went to put that cut card, 
they were distracted by our conversation and they would forget and put the cut card back in the original, you know, cutting off a deck or a deck and a half. And then it would be too late and they'd, you know, probably be a little bit embarrassed, but they just start dealing it out and try to remember the next shoe to cut off two and a half decks. But by doing that, not only could I beat the game with two and a half decks cut off, which is rare, it, had, it has to be really good rules, but by distracting them about half the time, I made it, you know, a very beatable game again. And I played quite a few hours with that and they never ended up backing me off. You can also decide if you're getting half shoot, you know what, why don't I just get out of here? I can always come back another trip, another shift and try this place again, but why don't I get out of here before the real back off comes? Speaking of the real back off, let's talk about what happens and how to handle it when a real back off arrives. The first thing they're almost certainly going to do is ask you to step away from the table. For whatever reason, they don't want all the gamblers there to know that they back off winning players. So they ask you to step away. You know, you can decide if you wanna go with them or if you say, oh no, I'm right here. You know, let's have this conversation right here. You can also ask, hey, can I finish this shoe? They're almost certainly gonna say, no, you can't finish the shoe, but you know, you can ask if you want. But if they try to back you off in the middle of a hand, you do have a right to play out that hand. It is, you know, at least if in a non-tribal casino, by law, they have to let you finish out the hand. You can decide if you've got a 12 against a 10 or a 16 against a 10 to just pull your bet back. But if you've got a 20 against a dealer's six, then you can say, hey, let me finish out this hand and they are you know, supposed to let you do that. So how do we actually respond to the back off when it comes? When they say, we're sorry, Mr. Jones, your game is just too good for us, no more blackjack. Or if they say, hey, we don't want your action here, how do we respond? Well, the first thing I would say is it never helps to burn bridges. I know you want to feign you know, just horror and self-righteousness and defensiveness that they would back off any player from their game, but they know what you're doing, you know what you're doing, and if you argue with them, it's not gonna make things better. I've tried it all in a casino. I've tried arguing with them, I've tried pleading, I've tried saying, well, can I just use a smaller bet spread? None of that stuff in my experience has worked. So what I actually learned to do, you can try this if you want, is I apologize. It seems to completely throw them off and take away their kind of aggressiveness. I just say, oh, I'm sorry. I wasn't trying to do anything wrong here. I was just enjoying playing and of course I'm gonna to try to play to win, but I hope I didn't do anything wrong here. When I do that, it seems to de-escalate the situation. They're probably fairly emotionally charged when they're coming here to back you off. And just by de-escalating the situation, it seems to go better. They might still be jerks about it, but I would say more often than not, they say, well, you know, you're, you're playing a winning game and we just can't handle that here. It, it seems to be better than kind of ramping up and escalating things where they're much more likely to demand ID, want to refuse to cash you out or any of the, you know, kind of just punk moves that casinos might try to pull if they really have a problem with you. I talk about it in detail in the video, the truth behind casino backoffs, but there's really three kinds of backoffs you'll experience. There's, hey, no more blackjack. Then there's, you're backed off from all casino games. And then the most daunting is trespass, where they say, we have a right to arrest you for trespassing if you come back to this casino. So let me talk about how to handle each of these. If you're only backed off from blackjack, there still might be opportunities to generate EV in that casino in other ways. Maybe you have comps you can still use. Maybe there are other exploitable games or machines in those casinos. So, you know, be thankful that you can still use your comps there or whatever else it might be. And whether you're backed off from just blackjack or even all table games, it's really up to you if you want to come back and try blackjack there again. I know some people like Tommy Highland, he says he's been backed off from some casinos dozens of times. I've been backed off from some casinos, not dozens, but several times. And you know, it's gonna be okay. It's a different story if you've been trespassed. Now, if you've been trespassed at a casino, it is up to you if you want to push that or not. Some card counters just laugh at it when a casino trespasses them and they continue to go back to those casinos over and over again. But I also know some APs that have had some bad situations where they actually get arrested from returning to casinos that have trespassed them. So you're gonna have to make that decision on your own. Here's some other thoughts on back offs. First off, don't make it a bigger deal than it is. So I was thinking about an analogy and you know, grocery stores might have the no shirt, no shoes, no service thing where they say, you know, 
they don't have to serve you, or you might have to leave their grocery store if you show up with no shirt, no shoes on. Well, imagine a friend says, hey, I'll pay you 500 bucks to go shop in there with no shoes on. And it could be that 80% of the time you're able to get away with it because nobody's paying attention to your shoes. I mean, I would do that all day. If they then say, hey, you have no shoes on, we're not gonna you know, check you out here at this grocery store. I'd be like, oh, sorry, okay, not a problem. And I would leave, but I'm not gonna act like you know this horrible thing has happened to me. I knew that they have a right to refuse service to me if they want to. And I also know that it's a free country. I can go in there and try to shop with no shoes on. Look, I know that's not a perfect analogy, but my point is, if this were to happen to me, if I were to try to shop with no shoes on and they you know, said, hey, no, no business to people with no shoes, I would say, I would take it in stride. I wouldn't freak out about it. It's the same in a casino. They might wanna treat you like you're a criminal because you're playing a winning game, but don't, don't let them treat you that way. Just take it in stride, move on to the next place, generate more EV somewhere else, and don't you know, let it seem like this awful thing that happened to you that you have to do everything in your power to avoid happening again. For myself, all my friends who've made six or seven figures at card counting, the reality is you gotta deal with back offs. And to have a high level of success, it means handling lots of back offs and not worrying about it. It's really not that big of a deal. They're just saying they don't want you to play there because you're too good for them. It's their business decision. And hopefully this video will help you know how to navigate that, how to overcome it, how to deal with it when it happens. For more on this topic, you can check out our video, The Truth About Back Offs in Casinos, or actually watch the video of me getting backed off from a casino. And we'll put those links below.